Hello and welcome to another episode of the Freedom From Religion Foundation's Ask an Atheist on Facebook Live. I'm Dan Barker. I'm co-president of the Freedom From Religion Foundation, a national organization of freethinkers working to keep state and church separate and to educate the public about the views of non-theists. We're broadcasting live from our national office in Madison, Wisconsin. And this show is called Ask an Atheist. So we really want your questions. You can feel free to post your comments or questions right here on the Facebook page or by sending them to askanatheist at ffrf.org. So uh, Annie Laurie is not here today. She's in Washington, D.C. at the State Department, actually. And so she asked me to kind of co-host the show today with P.J. Slinger. Today we're going to talk about some of the mail. We're going to read some of the mail that we get here at FFRF, physical mail and email, uh, both good and not so good. And here to help me today with this task is P.J. Slinger. P.J. Slinger is the editor of our monthly newspaper, Free Thought Today. So whatever prompted you to work in such a dark and meaningless job, PJ. I mean, <laughs> editor of an atheist free thought newspaper. Well, the, the interesting thing is that before um, I'd ever really known about FFRF, I moved to Madison in 2000, and the newspaper I worked at got a copy of it, Free Thought Today, whenever it came out. And I was well, very... You're, we were on the press list, right? We sent it to you yes, every month. Yes, yes. So it turned out I started reading it, and uh, one of the first things that I really uh, liked was the crank mail, huh. just because I didn't know a whole lot about the organization, but the crank mail just always made me laugh. Crank like, mail, you mean the, the bad letters? The bad get. letters that FFR receives from you know, the so-called Christians. Um, and so that kind of got me started in what is FFRF, and you know, here I am. Uh, 19 years later, working for you guys. So you mean when we send our newspaper out to the media, somebody, sometimes they actually read it? Sometimes, <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, and eventually that, as soon as they got it in the office, it came on my desk just because they knew that I was extremely interested in that. Free Thought Today is 10 times a year. It started in 1983. And when did you start? At Free As here? editor here. Uh, in 2015. 2015, okay. You've been carrying it for that many years. Yep. So. So the crank mail, um, we hear from readers of Free Thought today that some of them really love it. That's the first thing they read in the paper. Yep. And others hate it. They say, what a waste of space to put all these letters from the angry believers. Uh, what do you think? You enjoy them, I guess. Well, obviously that's what drew me in initially, <laughs> and I can see both points. I mean, I do think it, it's a nice lighthearted part of the paper, you know, to go with a lot of the serious stuff that we do. But also I can see that the people are like, why, why promote you know, all these naysayers and haters? Um, but I think by and large, more people are very fond of it. So mm -hmm. I, I don't plan on... But, but you, you run it like a small type, of, like a third of a page. It's not taking up a whole oh, lot yeah. of space. Yeah, so it's we, like... could, we could write a, have a book of all crank mail, yeah. but I don't know if people would be that interested in it. But I think... You know, a third of a page to a quarter of a page yeah. of small print is, yeah. so is you, enough. So you you get to edit all that stuff. So, yep. uh, are you impressed with their literary and grammatical and spelling talents? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's part of the the thing we do or don't do with crank mails. We don't edit any of it. Huh. So the way it comes in is the way we print it. So with all the misspellings and everything, just to show that you know maybe these people aren't the brightest yeah. crayon in the box. Yeah. So, and, and all caps sometimes. Oh, yeah. Yep. So, what are we going to do today? We're going to read some of the mail? Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll how, read some of it. How do you, are you going to pick something to read, or what do we Yeah, I picked a few items over the last few months. That, okay. Um, a lot of them are a little over the top with swear words and everything, so we pulled back on those, but we've got some that are okay. somewhere a little well, mid-range. I guess we got some visuals to look at here on the screen here. So, what is that? That's actually... Uh, that's a tweet, actually. It's uh, directed uh, something we did from VR. I guess it was where the shooting was. They did a beautiful thing. You are Satan and making this an ugly thing. You must like mass shootings more. Well, I guess that's what they think about us, right? <laughs> read, read the next one. Can you see it? You have people changing their little kids' sex because of what FFRF teaches. 
Really? Yeah, well, I guess, you know. So here oh, comes, no. um, we, we have a out of the closet billboard that we put up that um, free thinkers, atheists and agnostics can put their own saying and their picture on it. But here's one, here's a, here's one that somebody submitted that did not get approved by a believer. And uh, it says, I would love to tell you something. It's kind of blanked out there. <laughs> I would love to tell you something heathens. There is a special place in hell and I would love to be the one to send you all there. Marcus Sanders. So the funny thing about, people always say a special place in hell. Well, isn't hell like the worst possible place ever that you're burning and tormented for eternity? But maybe the special place, the is, special place is a little is, less hot, maybe, or, or something. Or a little more hot, oh. or, you know, it, it just never made sense. Like, you're yeah. The, but you're I guess in the worst possible place. But if, if, if we're going to go there, it may as well be special. Don't you may think? as well. Yeah. Yeah, so um, what do we got coming up next? <clears throat> okay, so just this week we got a, an envelope in the mail. Uh, you can see that it's addressed to me, actually, at our P.O. box. God bless America. And then there's something that says, Peace on Earth to Christians. That's on the outside of it. And what's inside the envelope? This cute little penguin card <laughs> that says... Uh, why aren't you fighting this? Well, that's part of the message. Uh, Islam. Why aren't you fighting Islam? And are you afraid of being beheaded? Um, can you read the rest of that? You. You know, Christians are an easy target. They. Uh, yeah. They turn the other cheek and, and pray, pray for, for you. you. See, Christians. We shouldn't be afraid of Christians because they're so loving, right? Try, try and get a Koran out of a hotel, and then see what happens. You know, we get that a lot. How come we're always picking on Christians and not Islam? Because we're afraid of Islam, but we're, Christians are so loving, we're not afraid of them. But we do, don't we? We, we do. Lose. It's just that, you know, in the U.S., overwhelming number of people are Christian, so that's where most of the issues come up. Yeah. So if FFRF was in Baghdad, it would be a totally different that is true. scene that we're doing. So, uh, yeah, we do. We have made complaints about Muslims and Islamic and I've debated Islamic and Muslim scholars over the years eight mm -hmm. times actually okay so um, uh, in fact I'm we're doing some work on the Quran right now but uh, and of course there are some really nice Christians but there's an awful lot of really angry Christians we're gonna see some more of that today uh, what else do we have here Bruce uh, may God uh, believers you you gray something jerks Dan and or Dan and Annie, that's Annie Laurie Gaylor. Dan and Annie something heads, go hang yourselves. All right. So probably lemon heads. Yeah, I would <laughs> think so. So go hang that's that's those are the loving Christians that guy yep. was talking about, right? That we hear from. And then here's a what is it? This is like a Facebook, right? Ha 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 ha. I pray all you dumb idiots get run over by an eighteen wheeler. Well, how does that work? It must be a big truck. Yep. And <laughs> 18 wheeler rolling. Uh, what does that say, John? Go to hell, you atheist piece of blank. You atheist piece of intelligence, maybe, uh, from John Lucas. This was in the mail. Uh, we have our membership forms and brochures that we send out, and somebody decided to return it. God bless you fools. The only lower form of life are Muslims. Well, I guess we're not on the bottom then, right? I guess. Well, we were up until a few years ago, and now yeah. you know, I guess we've kind of come. I don't out. know if leapfrogged, yeah. but jumped over them. So look at this cute. Look at that cute little cottage and that peaceful little scene. Uh, where did you get this garbage? Maybe that was with the free thought today. Maybe, <laughs> maybe it came with the newspaper. Yep. Hell is waiting for you and your kind. Our kind. I guess we're. Uh, so many lies, and you have got the gall to put it in the CJ, but... We think it's probably the Courier Journal. Like a newspaper? Yeah, but we, we don't know for sure. So there must have been an article that ran about us, and that person yeah. was complaining about it. Um, so um, we, we do get really... Oh, here's another one. This was addressed to Annie Laurie. Annie. By the way, her name is Annie Laurie. It's a double name. Don't ever call her Annie. We've all learned that. I've learned that right really early. Her <laughs> name is Annie Laurie. One day, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. So that doesn't sound like free will, does it? It sounds kind of like a 
what? Like a thread yeah. or something. Uh, oh, here's one of our um, uh, membership forums that people, a lot of people do send them in and they join and they contribute. And this says, I will continue to pray for you. And I'd like to make a donation to FFRF's legal fund of 100 tons of, what is that? 100 tons of something since you enjoy spreading it. I do too. And the person's name, can you read that? Eternal Hell. Or that's the city. I am Satan. I am name. Satan on, on Intense Fire Boulevard. Uh, and then look at, we have membership categories on the right, you know. Uh, that's how, my favorite part. Individual, household, and then at the very bottom, jerks and freaks. So <laughs> come on down, they said. Oh, here's another form that somebody returned to us. Go to hell, spawn of Satan. Does Satan have children? Well, we don't know. Well, maybe, maybe editors of uh, Free Thought magazines are children of Satan, right? Could be. Um, so um, do we have emails to show, too? Do we get... Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, we get a lot of emails, yeah. especially after uh, we appear on, in, uh, like, Fox News or on local television, um, you know, in the city that we're making a complaint. If they yeah. do a report on us, people will inundate us with hate mail. Yeah. So once in a while, a radio talk show host will tell the listeners, like on a conservative station, call up the Freedom From Religion Foundation and tell them what you think. And so our phones just get jammed once in a while when that happens. And it's usually not very friendly. No. And, and they often think that we are somehow responsible to them, like they're calling a government agency. Like we're a membership organization and they're not our members, so we're not really responsible to these people, but they're calling us with all of this what do you think about that? And what do you say? Uh, but, so, Luckily, uh, uh, I'm not on that end. I don't have to deal with that. I mean, I appreciate all the work that our administrative staff does to you hide handle back, those calls. You hide right? back in the editorial office. Yep. Okay, what is this? Is this an email? Um, yep, uh, this is one of the crank mail emails. <clears throat> you people make me sick to my stomach. You're worse than the ACLU, which also sucks. I have a huge nativity scene in my front yard right by the road. Care to sue me? Go ahead. I'll fart in your face. That's <laughs> so, a great, great ending. <laughs> Gary Soskine. So <laughs> we would not complain about a nativity scene in, in a person's front yard. Correct. That's that's private speech. And I think what this Gary guy doesn't understand is the difference between free speech and government speech. We only sue or complain when there's religious symbols like nativity scenes on government property. So go ahead, Gary, put your nativity scene up. We applaud that. If it is, like most nativity scenes I've seen, it's probably very tacky, <laughs> <Most likely. laughs> you know, but it's your freedom to put your nativity scene on your front yard. We're, let's look at another one. Stop being butt hurt. What's the grammar there? Stop being butt hurt. People have religion. It has been around for decades. It's been around and for decades. Religion. <laughs> yeah. Decades. Well, wow. oh, and centuries. Uh, something, something stupid, nonprofit, something I happen to love, Christmas lights down in Ozark, Missouri. You will not win this war. It has been that way for years now. You want to change it. Wow. So, but he did put his name in lowercase. Right. Yes. Well, actually, I oh, I you, changed that. When I say I don't edit anything, I do make their names all standard. Oh, okay. Just so. So th that was all caps originally. Can you read this one? Sure. Please come on down to our little town. Introduce yourselves to everyone you see on the street. Let's see how that ends up. John, <laughs> John Gall. John Gall. He's got a lot of gall. Yeah. So uh, that sounds like a threat, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, we do get a fair number of threats. Most of them like this. I. I think aren't serious, yeah. but sometimes they have threats directed to specific people in our staff, yeah. on our staff, and if that's the case, we will alert the authorities. Yeah. So put that one back up again, Bruce. What was this one? Uh, you come around my neighborhood, you will most likely be carried out in hearse. You blank suckers need to die sooner the better boy there's some christian love right there it is yep of course he didn't say christian it could have been could have been who knows what uh, uh you want to read that one christianity is freedom from religion christianity is not a religion it is a reality 
So we learn a lot with the yeah. crank mail. <laughs> well, you, you hear, I hear that a lot, and you've seen it too, that they say um, Christianity is not a religion. It's just a relationship, right? So and, and they're, they're, some of them say they're also free from religion because Christianity is not a religion. But if that's true, then they would not be afforded the protections under the First Amendment guarantees of religious liberty, right? If it's not a religion, there would be no freedom of religion for them to practice Christianity. So which way is it? Of course it's a religion. Christianity is definitely a religion. Any more, Bruce? Uh, all right. Can I, oh, go ahead. You read it. Cannot wait for all of you to go to hell. We'll be watching with a smile. Liberal trash who are disgusting and deserve the worst in life. Fred Turstein. So people are going to be burning and tortured, and they're going to be watching with a smile. What, what kind of a sick morality is that? I did a debate once in Denver with a, a Muslim. Uh, he was a local imam. And I quoted part of the Quran where it says, uh, or the, the Hadith, one of the two, where it says, uh, we non-believers are going to burn in hell while the believers are going to sit up under the fig leaves on these purple couches next to these dewy-eyed maidens, and they will be laughing at us as we burn in hell. And the skin burns off our arms, and then Allah will, will grow it back so he can burn it off again, and they will oh. be laughing. And then the imam during the debate went, Really? really, there's a video of him going, smiling and, and affirming that they will get joy out of seeing other people suffer. Hmm. So where's the compassion? You know, where's the, where's the joy in that? Um, that's... A smart guy? Here's a smart guy one. Okay. Uh, let me read part of this. Hi there, I'm 19. I'm a truth seeker. I've been studying evolution and, and creation and seeing which one holds the truth. From what scholars have found is that the Bible is 100% true. There's no contradictions in it. It's come to me that it is logical to see that God created everything than to believe that we came out of nothing. It takes more faith, I would say, to believe that there is no God. I was wondering if you'd be able to provide concrete evidence on evolution since all of it has been disproven false, disproven false, <laughs> and based on assumptions. So, David, what books have you been reading? Yeah. Uh, he's, uh, he's 19 and he's, he's looking into it, but clearly he's not looking in the right places. Well, he hasn't read any actual science books, no. apparently. It looks like he's parroting what these creationist writers yep. are saying. So, um, we get that all the time, people wanting to set us straight. Yeah, I think we have a couple other letters that I put in that... Here's one, Jenna Shepard. Darwinian macroevolution is just a theory and a weak one at that with zero actual physical evidence of it ever actually happening. If you really examine it, it's not reasonable at all. Hmm. Zero evidence, huh? Atheism is a belief system, as some call it, the religion of, na the religion of naturalism. I've, that's a new one. <clears throat> it's a belief about our world. So if you will work to keep one set of beliefs out of a school, why not the other belief system? Since they both require an element of faith. Neither can be proved. Can you explain this contradiction of mission? So we get that a lot, that non-religion is a faith. Yes. Uh, it's like bald is a hair color. Yeah. Like, yeah, if, if atheism is a religion, then bald is a hair. Or off is a TV channel. Or like Bill Maher said, uh, abstinence is a sex position. You know, <laughs> <laughs> The absence of something is not a something, and yet they seem to think that if we are simply being neutral and not promoting religion, somehow we are promoting non-religion in the schools. But um, What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Well, I guess we keep educating. Yep. Um, here's another smart guy one. Okay, let me try this one. Ken Sensabaugh. I love watching atheist squirm what does he do? He goes out to a big park and there's a bunch of atheists on the ground squirming. Scream, yeah. <laughs> Has he ever seen an atheist, I wonder. I love watching atheists squirm when confronted with the truth, reality, science. That's why I love the Ark Encounter. Oh. Uh, right there, you know it's going to be a good one. Yeah. Atheists have a hard time explaining the reality in regards to geology. Wow, a hard time. They can't explain adequately coal formations and why there are corals and shell fossil layers below and above these carboniferous layers. They deny the flood of Noah's day 
In spite of the massive amounts of geological evidence that supports a global flood, I have to laugh when I hear the name called the thinking atheist, which is obviously an oxymoron. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. So he's quoting Psalm 14, 1, that uh, the fool says in his yep. heart. So you get to read all this stuff. Yep. But it comes in. Uh, so uh, Jackie Douglas, our uh, office manager, she gets most of the mail and she will bring physical mail to me that's directed like crank mail or letters to the editor type stuff or things that I would need. Um, and then she also gets a lot of the emails and we have a separate email folder called crank mail just because we get so much of it. So she puts those into the email folder mm. and a couple times a month I'll go through there and I'll call the, the better ones, for lack of a better word, for the paper. Uh, I would say we print probably about a quarter of the ones we, of get. The ones we get. You can't put an addendum in for people who really love that stuff? <laughs> yeah, I extra. suppose we could, we could uh, put a little more on the website or something, but uh. um, a lot of them are just kind of the same. They just say, you know, the words uh, separation of church and state aren't in the Constitution. Yeah, you know, that's, okay. that's a big yeah. one well, that everybody uses. Well, this is a tough job, but somebody's got to do it, PJ. Yeah. Right? It's, it's wade through and read all that yep. stuff. And then a lot of times during the holiday season, or when we, when we all say season's greetings or happy holidays, obviously, we get Christmas cards. And we get tons of Christmas cards. And I remember Ann Gaylor got a Christmas card once that said, Merry Christmas, I hope to see you crossing the street someday. Uh, and uh, people angry that we are advocating for a natural secular greeting instead of saying Merry Christmas. But here's an example of a card we got from, um, it's, it's, I think it's some kind of a order of, of monks or something. See, that's from the uh, Passionate Priests and Brothers. And look what it says here. May the Spirit of God be upon you this Christmas, it underlined. And then, um, I will see you in heaven, go to heaven. God bless you down at the bottom left. Hope you have a Merry Christmas. And it's a frickin' Christmas, underlined. Christmas tree. I don't care what you or your little group say, so you can have fun in hell. Merry Christmas. And there's a little heart. See the little heart? Love, Lana. And then on the right side, Jesus loves everyone, even atheists. He loves you. Merry Christmas. And then you such... Is that bitch there on the right? Um, yep. Oh, you suck. You suck, you suck bitch. Uh, something. Uh, and then down at the bottom on the right, Jesus is my friend, but crossed off and says dog. And if you don't like it there, F-U-P-S, may God be with you. Sincerely, Alex. Uh, and Jesus is my homeboy. What does that mean? Jesus is my homeboy. Love, Tony. Um, these must be like novitiate little younger people. But Jesus loves everyone but you. And then at the very bottom, I hope God smites you. Have fun in hell. So what a wonderful nice. Christmas <laughs> message we get from people uh, around the world. Yep. Uh, so, uh, it, but it's not all negative, right? We get some no, positive? No, we definitely get some good mail too. Um, a lot of those are come, most of them come from our members who appreciate what we're doing, uh, church state separation. Uh, and a lot of those will print in Free Thought Today as letters to the editor. Yeah. So I did uh, pull a few for today just to offset all the hate. Really? Okay, so you selected some of these. Let's mm -hmm. see them here. You want to read that one? Sure. This is from a, a prison inmate or former prison inmate. Um, back in 2016, FFRF Associate Counsel Sam Grover took the Virginia Department of Corrections to task and forced them to recognize secular humanism as a religion. This move was monumental and laid the groundwork for a series of changes that helped secularize a religiously oppressive environment. Uh, he then went on to talk about all the things that Sam had done to help. And then he concludes with, thank you from the bottom of my heart for everything FFRF does and continues to do. Sam and Colin, uh, one of our... Uh, Other attorneys, uh, yep, fellows, our legal fellow. Legal fellow, have been remarkable and are owed the deepest gratitude from all the inmates of the Virginia Department of Corrections. That's nice. Todd Landek. Yep. It's nice to see that kind of sincere... 
Uh, here's a member of FFRF from Ohio. I'm an FFRF member. If I had a million dollars, you guys would be first and foremost in mind for the largesse. Your work is truly exceptional. I'm continually referring people to your website. I've never been a continuing dues-paying member of any organization other than yours. I can't rave enough about what you have accomplished. So it's members like that that keep our organization going. And they are the ones we are responsible to. If a member calls mm -hmm. us, then that's our duty. If the hate mail people call us, well, that's, no. Speaking of that, um, when I first started, I actually made the mistake of responding to some of the hate mail, uh, you know, on a factual type basis. You know, I wasn't trying to, you know, go in a, an emotional level. It was just factual. And they just draw you down into the rabbit hole right yeah. away. So I learned pretty quickly, nope, just... Yeah. Well, have you noticed sometimes it starts off very civil and polite? I just have sure. a question to ask you in the fairness of free speech. But then as you go, it gets worse and worse and worse and worse. Yep. And then you wonder, I just wasted 10 minutes, you know, yep. uh, give, get some guy getting his religious jollies talking to us on the phone, right? So, yeah. uh, But when a member calls, like these people we read, here's a member up on the screen uh, from New Hampshire. Thank you so much for my new Afterlife member pin. Now, that's an accomplishment. That's a $5,000 membership. Yep. Somebody joined and got a pin. We have a pin that we give out. I'm so happy to have this beautiful pin that I will wear it with pride. I'm such a proud member of FFRF and sing your praises every chance. I praises? Isn't that like a religious? <laughs> well, <laughs> Sing your praises every <laughs> chance I get. Thanks for all you do, New Hampshire. And this one, uh, I believe that FFRF is the most important organization protecting our rights and freedoms. That's pretty impressive. Most important. Yeah. So please upgrade my membership to lifetime status. Blah, blah. Thanks for that incentive. So he says he can break even in 25 years at the age of 99. So 25 years. So that person is, what, 74, right? <laughs> and yep. join... So there's different levels of membership that we have. You can just become a normal member at $40 a year which is nothing compared to a weekly tithe that the churches sure. demand of people. But $40 a year. Oh, there's the levels on the screen. Uh, uh, you can join as a household also for $50. That gives you two votes, basically, if you want to come to the convention and vote. You, be, you can count twice. There's gung-ho, sustaining, sponsoring, individual life, then individual afterlife. And then here's a new one, individual beyond afterlife. And I guess we have a few of those who have joined as well. And it's because of the support and generosity of members around the country that the Freedom From Religion Foundation is able to continue doing what we do. Yeah. So the hate mail, the crank mail is kind of humorous. We brush it off, but it does show you what we're up against. Yep. But more important, the... But it also shows that we're making an impact. If we weren't making an impact, they wouldn't care enough to write. Yeah, yeah I guess so. that's true. Yeah, we should be worried if they weren't. Yeah. Because that means that we're being ignored. So in Free Thought Today, which you edit, um, you have a, like two or three pages of actual letters from our members. That you yep, print. usually two pages, um, sometimes a little bit less, sometimes more. So we try to keep it to two pages. And um, commenting, and once in a while they'll correct a mistake. Uh, very, once, very few mistakes. Once every three years. <laughs> <laughs> um, if they're mistakes, they're not your fault, PJ, right. probably. Uh, so I guess that's all we got from letters, uh, uh, crank yep. mail and positive mail from viewers. Uh, are there any questions? Where's, where's, the, where's the iPad here? So I don't, how do I see the questions, Lauren? Uh, oh, I got it. Okay, thanks. It took a while for the, for the angel of technology to bring this in. Here's a question. Phil Monroe. Phil watches the show a lot, so hi, Phil. Uh, Phil asks, has FFRF ever responded to crank mail? Um, so you must have asked this before I just discussed that, where I said the first year I worked here, I made a couple, two yeah. or three, you know, responses yeah. and quickly learned it goes nowhere quick. You know, it just, it's yeah. not worth it yeah. because you're not, you're clearly not, arguing with somebody who wants to learn you just want you're arguing with somebody who is set in their ways and is not going to change based on whatever you say so. yeah but occasionally it's it's more than a one-way street occasionally you might be talking with somebody 
who really is open and wants to learn. And uh, sometimes I get calls from people who want to do a public debate, for example. So we will talk and we will engage. And as long as you feel like there's a mutual respect between both sides, I'm not trying to bash you and you're not trying to bash me, well, then occasionally we will respond, and that mm -hmm. can be very productive. We even had uh, once or twice uh, a class from a religious college. The students came into our building here just to sit and talk, which is really kind of fun. And they came as believers and they left as believers, but we had a good dialogue that was back and forth. So it can happen. Gave them something to think about. But if it's an all uppercase screaming yeah. uh, vulgarity email, you're not going to want to no. reply. No. And the it. ones that, that do come off as sane and logical, those aren't going to make crank mail anyway. You yeah. know, those are ones that we may respond to or I may send to somebody else in the building. Uh, depending on what the yeah. topic is. Yeah, and once in a while they're really asking about state church separation. They might mm -hmm. be believers and want to know what is our position. So that's that can be fruitful at times. Uh, another uh, question here. My question is for PJ. Oh, this is from Lauren Searing. Lauren's in the other room in there. <clears throat> um, my question for PJ. What is the most memorable crank mail that you have ever received since becoming our editor? And how do you pick the best of the best for the paper? Ah, I, there have been so many that I don't think I have a favorite because they just kind of overwhelm because they are so outlandish. And that's the thing, just last month, uh, somebody sent us a letter saying, do you guys just make this stuff up and put it in the paper? One and, of our members asked that? Yeah, because it seems so over the top that real people wouldn't actually send us this stuff. They thought you were just making it yeah, up. Yeah, us or the staff members or whatever. <laughs> and I had to assure him that, no, um, these are true letters. And, you know, maybe for the first month or two, I could have come up with some of this stuff. But after a while, you know, your brain just can't fathom all the different ways that these people have to yell at us or rip on us or swear at us or what is whatever. Well, you are a smart guy, PJ, but I don't think you're that creative. I mean, to come up with the... No, I but, am certainly not. But this person who asked you that question must not spend much time online and social media because you see that stuff all the time. I mean, it's consistent with what we hear from uh, yeah. detractors. So. And so what I pick for the paper are ones that are not the run-of-the-mill ones that I, you know, I probably get, like I said, a lot that just say church state separation isn't in the constitution but a lot of the ones that just have some new angle that you never would have thought of in a million years and it's mm -hmm. like where does that come from so i try to get a little variety um you know if i'm working with a hundred different uh email crank mails per month i'll probably get 25 or so in the paper and those are the ones that each have their own little oddness to them i guess yeah. i should write a song called 50 ways to send somebody to hell because <laughs> uh, there's all these different creative creative things um, all right any more here okay rachel wilson hi dan hi rachel i was wondering if you ever get hecklers at debates uh very rarely i very rarely get heckled at a debate it has happened uh once in i think it was kansas or iowa uh a local Baptist minister, skinny Baptist minister with a white shirt and a long skinny black tie, he stood up in the middle of the audience and started yelling, blasphemy, what you are doing is committing blasphemy. He just started going on and on and on. And finally, someone had to come over to get to him. And when the bouncer came over, he sat down finally. And I said, wow, thank you for saying that. That's a compliment. You think that what I'm saying is blasphemous? Well, thank you. I really appreciate it. Because blasphemy is actually a moral impulse. Blasphemy is challenging the authority of the dictator. That's what blasphemy means. You're attributing bad, you're criticizing the leader. So I said, thank you for pointing that out. And, uh, but that's rare to get an actual mm -hmm. heckler. Sometimes um, the audience will get a bit enthusiastic with their applause or booing or cheering, that kind of thing. But no, it's... it's at a, at a public debate, and I've done 136 of them by now in the last 34 years, it's very civil. Both sides are there to give a good impression, and it's usually at a university, so you get very little of that ugliness at a public debate. 
Another question. Okay. Clint Marshall. Have you ever gotten threatening crank mail and had to call the cops? Yes, we have. Um, doesn't happen very often, but if there's a specific instance of somebody making a direct threat to a person, uh, usually a staff member, we have to report that, you know, saying, you know, I'm going to come after you or I'm going to send somebody after you. Uh, I know where you live kind of thing, whether they do or not. You know, you can't just toss that off. Yeah. You have to, you know, take take precautions. So yeah. I would say once or twice a year, maybe yeah. we have to alert the police. But yeah. uh, others that are more generic, it's just like those are the ones that are like yeah. whatever. You know, you don't know where we are and, you know, you're just spouting off. And the police have told us that they want to know. Yes. We should not hesitate to call them, even if it seems a little funny. The police want to know who's making these kinds of threats. And once in a while, we've even had to look for somebody's, you know, where they're from. And in one case, uh, the police even paid this guy a visit. Oh, I didn't uh, know that. Because he had guns. And uh, he was he was actually threatening me and my family, and he was looking online at grandkids, and I mean it was really spooky. And the police actually paid a visit to the guy's house, and it totally calmed it down. I think when he realized how serious it mm -hmm. was, because if you own guns, I think in some states, and you make threats like that, you could jeopardize your ownership. I think that you know I don't know all sure. the laws there, but uh, uh, in any event, uh, and sometimes it's not so much uh, <coughs> like I'm going to kill you, but things they want to do to our female employees, for example. I mean, that's like some of the calls we get from some of these male callers mm. are just really, really ugly. Yeah. One more here. Okay. We got time for one more, Bruce? Okay. Last question. Okay. Uh, Lucia Haynes. If you did publish a crank mail book, <laughs> I would definitely buy one. Would you be able to self-publish it or even just make a Kindle version? Uh, well, I... That's beyond my scope. I know, but would it sell? I mean, I know that she would buy a copy. Yeah. Uh, or maybe we could just put up a ver put an online ebook version of the crank mail. I mean, there's we have all the crank mail from the previous several years, if not more, available online. I think we would just have to cull them together and... Uh, create some type of ebook. I don't think it would be that difficult. I just don't know if it would be well read. Yeah, well, there would be some people who would like it. But so, uh, Free Thought Today is online. Is Crank Mail and Free Thought Today? People, yes. Subscribers yep. can get that so it is online. But a book is a thought. Well, thanks for the suggestion. Um, and it, it's a bit of an investment to print a book like that, but maybe, maybe so. So, I have one more thing to show you. Um, I have a whole file of like thank yous and positive mail, especially from speaking events oh. and uh, debates around the country. But in Reno, Nevada, I gave a talk, uh, and they made this really nice, this really nice sign for me. Can you can you zoom in on that maybe or uh, there? Thank you, Dan and the FFRF. And there's a nice note there about spending the time to come and visit us here on our campus. And then the students all signed it. And I and Annie Laurie and Andrew and others who do public events, we get notes, like not this big all the time, but we get notes and letters from very appreciative students and others around the country and around the world who really appreciate what we're doing. So, uh, so thank you, uh, uh, Reno secular students, for your thank you note. Uh, very nice. So there's, oh, I heard that there's one more, one more question here, all right. <clears throat> okay. So you can actually help us uh, if you support what we're doing by plugging uh, FFRF and going to ffrf.us slash join. You can get a complimentary copy of the newspaper that PJ Slinger, not Gunslinger, P.J. Slinger, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Truth Slinger. P.J. Mud Truth Slinger. <laughs> P.J. Slinger uh, edits Free Thought Today. And you can read more crank mail by subscribing to Free Thought Today. And uh, we also post crank mail on our Facebook page every Friday at 12 noon. So if you look at our, at our Facebook FFRF page, you can see some of the crank mail that we post there as well. 
So I guess that's it for the show. Any, yep. any other wise comments? Um, nope. no? That's as wise as I get. The, the wise guy comments. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you. PJ Slinger, yep. is, PJ Slinger is the editor of Free Thought Today, published by the Freedom From Religion Foundation. And thank you for watching our show today. We invite you to become a member. You can help us in our vital work to keep state and church separate and to educate the public about the views of non-theists. Go to FFRF.org or you can call us on the phone. Pick up your phone, 800-335-4021. And one way you can help FFRF is by contacting government officials who are violating the law. If you want to receive our action alerts on your smartphone, then send the text FFRF to 52886. Data rates may apply. Again, that's FFRF to 52886. Well, we'll see you again next week for another episode of FFRF's Ask an Atheist. <laughs>